The fuel system is of a wet wing construction with tanks, pumps, and an indication system. The fuel system includes a center tank, two main tanks, and two surge tanks. The surge tanks allow fuel tank venting. A fuel crossfeed system connects the left and right fuel manifolds through two crossfeed valves. These valves are used to eliminate an imbalance between the two main tanks. The left and right main tanks each contain two AC motor driven fuel pumps. The center tank contains two AC motor driven pumps. These pumps have twice the output pressure of the main tank pumps. When all six pumps are operating, the center tank pumps override the main tank pumps to provide fuel to the engines. A DC fuel pump located in the left main tank feeds fuel to the APU until AC power is established. Each fuel tank contains sensors that input their data to the fuel quantity indicating system. The fuel quantity indicating system uses fuel volume and density to calculate fuel quantity in kilograms. The fuel quantity is displayed full time on the fuel quantity panel. The FQIS senses the temperature of the fuel in the main tank and displays it here. The controls for the fuel system are located on the overhead panel. And as you recall, the fuel quantity panel is also located on the overhead panel. Now let's operate the system. This is the fuel panel normal configuration during pre-flight. All fuel pump switches are in the off position. With the pump switches off, the low pressure lights of the left and right main tank pumps are illuminated. However, the center tank pump pressure lights are extinguished. These pressure lights are inhibited when the pump switches are off. When AC power is established and the APU is running, the left forward fuel pump automatically supplies fuel to the APU. Fuel quantity for each tank is shown in thousands of kilograms. For this example, the total amount of fuel in the fuel tanks is 49,500 kilograms and is displayed on the fuel quantity indicator. Prior to engine start, all fuel pumps must be turned on for tanks containing fuel. Push the left aft fuel pump switch on. The on indication now appears and the pressure light is extinguished, indicating that the pump is operating. Continue configuring the fuel panel by turning on the remaining main tank fuel pumps. Continue. Continue. Since there is fuel in the center tank, turn on the center tank fuel pumps. Continue. These pumps are now operating and are capable of providing fuel under pressure to their respective fuel manifolds when the engines are started. To reduce electrical loads, the center tank pumps are inhibited until the associated engine is started. Thus, both center tank pumps are inhibited when the engines are shut down. As the associated engine is started, the inhibit is removed from the center tank pumps. The center tank pumps produce approximately twice the output pressure of the main tank pumps. As a result, when all pumps are operating, the center pumps override the mains to provide fuel to the engines. The fuel panel is now configured. All tanks contain fuel, so all fuel pumps should be turned on.
The cross-feed valves are controlled by these two switches. The switches should be off and the valves closed prior to engine start. The left and right fuel manifolds are isolated when both valves are closed. The cross-feed system will be discussed in more detail later. Initially, fuel is burned from the center tank because of the higher output of its override pumps. When the usable fuel in the center tank is depleted, the ICAS advisory message, center left fuel pump and center right fuel pump appear. The associated pressure lights also illuminate. Turn off the center pump switches. Continue. Remember that the center tank pump pressure lights are inhibited with the switches in the off position. After parking, all fuel pumps should be turned off. Turn off all main tank fuel pumps. Continue. 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 The fuel system is now shut down. This flight required a near maximum gross weight takeoff. Shortly after takeoff, you decide a situation exists that requires an immediate landing. The current gross weight is displayed on the approach reference page. The fuel jettison system allows you to quickly reduce the gross weight of the airplane so the maximum landing weight will not be exceeded. To determine if fuel jettison is required, compare the actual gross weight of the airplane with the maximum allowable landing weight. If the gross weight exceeds the maximum landing weight, fuel jettison is required. Only fuel from the center tank will be jettisoned. A fuel jettison nozzle is on the trailing edge of each wing. Also, two dedicated jettison pumps and transfer valves are located in the center tank. The fuel jettison panel is located above the fuel control panel. To begin fuel jettison, set the fuel jettison selector on. Then press the fuel jettison nozzle switches on. Fuel jettison is from the center tank only. The time required to empty full center tank is approximately 30 minutes. Turn the fuel jettison selector on now. Both fuel jettison pumps and both center tank fuel pumps operate. Both transfer valves open. Fuel is pumped to the fuel jettison valves. To open the jettison valves, select the left and right fuel jettison nozzle switches on now. The valve light illuminates until the valve opens. Fuel is now discharged from both jettison nozzles. Fuel is jettisoned at approximately 1,200 kilograms per minute or 2,600 pounds per minute. Fuel jettison can be terminated at your discretion. During fuel jettison, the flight management computer uses the totalizer value instead of the calculated value to determine gross weight. Therefore, you will not see the FMC fuel quantity disagree message. At a normal rate, a full center fuel tank will be discharged in approximately 30 minutes. Fuel jettison will cease when the center fuel tank is empty. Remember, you can also terminate fuel jettison at your discretion. When the center fuel tank is empty, 
The ICAST messages center left fuel pump and center right fuel pump appear to indicate low fuel pressure. The totalizer and calculated fuel quantity values are the same. The FMC now uses calculated again. Now that fuel jettison is completed, configure the fuel jettison panel for normal fuel system operation. Next, turn the fuel jettison selector off. The jettison transfer valves close and the pumps shut off. If a fuel jettison pump fails to operate, the fault light illuminates and ICAST displays a message. Fuel jettison can continue, although the time to discharge fuel will be increased. If a fuel jettison transfer valve fails to open, the fault light illuminates and an ICAST message is displayed. Fuel jettison can continue, although the time to discharge fuel will be increased. If a fuel jettison valve fails to open, the valve light remains illuminated and an ICAST message is displayed. In this case also, fuel jettison can continue, although the time to discharge fuel will be increased. Fuel imbalance information can be seen on the fuel quantity panel. In this example, the left main fuel tank has more fuel than the right. These switches control the forward and aft crossfeed valves. Fuel crossfeed is performed using both switches. Open the crossfeed valves. Continue. The crossfeed valve lights illuminate while the valves are in transit. Turn off the fuel pumps on the right main fuel tank. Continue. The left main tank fuel is now feeding both engines. Monitor the fuel until the main tanks are balanced. Fuel balancing is complete, so return the fuel panel to normal. Turn continue. Close the crossfeed valves. Continue. If either crossfeed valve fails to close after a time limit, the ICAS advisory message appears and the crossfeed valve light remains illuminated. Because the valve is failed open, the left and right fuel tanks cannot be isolated. If the crossfeed valve had failed closed, fuel crossfeed would be available with only one crossfeed valve. In this example, the aft crossfeed valve. 